Hi guys, I'm Cornish Kayak Angler and today I'm going to be talking about how I maintain and service the Mirage Drive on my kayak. So this is the, the Mirage Drive, it's the Beating Heart of All Hobie Mirage Kayaks and uh, this is what gets you from A to B on the water. Uh, so it's a pedal drive system, lots of moving parts and uh, as with all sort of machinery with lots of moving parts it is key to keep on top of maintenance to keep things running smoothly and reduce the risk of failure occurring whilst on the water. So this Mirage Drive, this is the Hobie Mirage Drive 180 uh, with the reverse mode. Um, but uh, the sort of process of uh, servicing and taking apart Mirage Drive, cleaning it up and putting it back together, it, it will apply to all, all, all Mirage Drive systems. So let's have a talk about how to go about it. Okay, so we're going to need a few tools and products today to perform service and maintenance on the Mirage Drive. Tool-wise, not much needed. Uh, an 11 mil spanner and a 14 mil spanner, um, and then also a posi screwdriver, and also we're using a 4 mil hex key as well. Uh, Product-wise, um, I'll be using corrosion block spray. So this is a lubricating spray with uh, anti-corrosion formula. Um, if you can't get hold of this stuff, then uh, an equivalent product is ACF50 from the same company. Um, both as good as each other. Uh, ACF50 is just the aviation version of corrosion block. Um, also be using uh, corrosion block grease, so it's a waterproof grease. Um, and we'll be using this on a few places as well in the Mirage Drive. Uh, all this stuff available at um, marine chandlery shops or online. Uh, also handy to have some paper towel uh, to give wipe down on the on the Mirage Drive, clean, clean all the muck off as we go. So let's start by dismantling the Mirage Drive. Okay, the first step to dismantling the Mirage Drive is to remove the pedal cranks. Um, to do this you have to undo the bolt on the drum. So take your 14mm spanner and uh, undo each bolt. That's the bolt removed. Uh, then it's a case of uh, squeezing the pedal adjustment lever and wiggling the crank arm out. Uh, then it's a case of turning the drive over and we'll, uh, we'll take the other side off. So that's the second bolt removed and again Squeeze the adjustment lever on the pedal and wiggle the arm out. So that's the pedal cranks removed and uh, to clean these up we can undo, take the lever off, grey lever and there's a spring located underneath we can pop that out, put that to one side okay, and then we can lift the lever up and we can give it a good clean down. Okay, so that's the pedal arms now clean. Uh, we can give them a quick wipe over with some corrosion block spray uh, to keep them in, in good condition and stop the salt from building up on the surface and potentially corroding the crank arms. So we can just get a bit of, bit of cloth, spray on some corrosion block. I'll just give it all a good wipe over. And if you want, you can uh, you can put a bit of grease on the pin there where the pin's uh, moving through the through the crank arm, just to keep it all all sliding nice and smoothly. So you have some uh, grease on the pin either side, so it's all sliding through nice and smoothly. And we can just wipe off any excess afterwards. And now we can pop the spring back in the arm and 
close that down. One complete. Put that up to one side, ready for uh, reassembly later on. Again, spring into the crank arm lever, and that one's now also ready. Uh, we also have a pivoting part on the pedal, the top of the crank arm. We can we can just spray a little a little corrosion block here and let it run into the into the joint there and uh, that'll keep that running nice and smoothly. The shaft can be accessed by removing the cap on the end of the pedal and again you can undo the pedal pad from there and uh, reduplicate the inside but usually just a quick spray of lubricant around the base of the joint that's enough to uh, keep it all running nice and smoothly. Okay, the next step is to remove the drums. So the drums are what the pedal cranks uh, are attached to, uh, pivot around the, the drum shaft there. Uh, that's what clicks into your click and go ports in the kayak. Um, to remove this drum assembly, we have to undo the chains uh, either side and also the idler cable, which runs around the idler pulley. Uh, to do that, we must undo six bolts uh, nuts in total uh, and you use your 11 mil spanner for these. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, it's a little tedious because you can't turn the spanner so much but um, we'll get there eventually. Okay so that's three of the, the nuts removed there from the drum. It's time to uh, flip it over and undo the other three on the other side. Okay, so that's all six nuts undone from either side of the drums uh, for the change in idler cable. Uh, now it's a case of uh, removing the threaded parts from the drum to release the cable and the chains. And once the three are removed from a drum, you can slide the drum off. Now this is a, a GT drum. Uh, the Mirage Drive 180 uses a, a GT drum and GT glide technology means that we have roller bearings on the pivoting parts such as the, such as the drum, uh, also the sprockets uh, and the idler pulley for sort of a smoother action whilst pedalling. Um, here you can see, if I show you, on the, the drum shaft we have the, uh, the roller bearings there. So these need to be removed and put to one side. Don't go losing any. Uh, we'll need to clean these up and uh, re-grease those before we can put them back in. So we can just take those off the off the drum, like so, and pop them on a on a piece of paper towel so we can clean them up. As you'll see, the drum itself is pretty pretty grim. It's got mark and grease all over it, so uh, we'll give this a good clean up uh, before we go reassembling. Uh, but first we can we can take the other drum off. We can remove the chains. These should now come off the sprockets. And these are V2 chains. Uh, the, the Mirage Drive 180 uses V2 change, chains. So uh, again, these are pretty gritty and uh, mucky. So these need to go clean up and re-grease before, before we go putting those back on. And idler cable there and runs around the idler pulley. Again, this is a V2 idler cable um, used on the V2 GT and the Mirage Drive 180s. And there's the second chain there off. So uh, now remove the second drum. Again, pretty pretty grim. It's a good clean up. Uh, and again, the roller bearings which we'll remove and give a good good clean up like so just 
So we'll put the rest of the uh, drive, the spine and the fins to one side whilst we uh, give these other bits a good clean up now. Okay, so that's one drum now looking better than it was earlier. Um, what I'm going to do now is just wedge some of this paper towel into the hole where the, where the roller bearings and dr uh, the drum shaft goes just to uh, remove any old grease and uh, we'll be filling that with new grease before it's all uh, put back together. So that's one cleaned up drum. Time to do the same with the second one. Okay, so that's two clean drums, two clean chains, and the clean idler cable. Uh, that just leaves the roller bearings and the, 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 the nuts to, to clean up now. Uh, so with the roller bearings, the best thing to do is just to get a sheet of kitchen roll, just grab a few at a time, maybe four or five, um, fold the towel over the top and just roll them over the towel and that sort of removes the old grease and muck from them and uh, we'll put those on a new clean sheet ready for re-greasing later before we put them back into the drum and onto the Mirage Drive so we'll just continue with the rest of these now And with the nuts, we can just give those a quick wipe over to get any, any muck off them. So we now have clean roller bearings for the drum. It should be 13 total, 15 for each drum. And six clean nuts for the, for the cables and chains. Okay, so the next section we're going to be working on the spine section of the Mirage Drive. This is sort of the housing which everything's held on to. Um, we're going to be removing the idler pulley, um, and that is released from a from a shaft with a it's held by a little uh, grub screw there, a hex key. So we'll be using the hex key just to uh, loosen that off, and then we'll be able to slide the idler pulley shaft out. We undo that enough we should be able to um, poke the shaft from the from the back with a screwdriver uh, and that will uh, pop it out the front like so you can slide that all the way out there and that's the idler pulley shaft and then that's released the idler pulley. The idler pulley again uh, uses roller bearings. We can see those on the inside there. And we'll be re removing those in a second to give those a clean up. For now we can pop the uh, the main spine out of the way. And with the shaft, we can give that a quick wipe down to remove any old grease. Pop that to one side. You may need a, a screwdriver just to poke out the the roller bearings in the idle pulley there, like so. And we can just pull those out. Get onto a sheet of paper where we can Give those a clean. So these are pretty grubby. The idler pulley is quite exposed to uh, foot well area um, of the of the kayak. So if you've got fish in the foot well, then 
guys with pulley can quite often get covered in slime and, and muck, so uh, this can be quite a mucky bit to clean. Okay, so that's the idle pulley roller bearings cleaned up. Uh, there's 12 in total, so we'll be popping those to one side. Uh, don't mix them up with any other roller bearings because they're a different length. So uh, put those in that piece of paper towel and we'll be coming back to those again in a little bit. So that just leaves the uh, idler pulley itself to wipe down. Again, pretty grim, gritted up. So we'll uh, give this a good wipe down and clean all the old grease out from the, from the inside. One clean idler pulley. So now we'll put that up to one side with the idler shaft. Now we come back to the, the spine. Uh, this, this is where it can get a little bit complex. There's quite a few uh, moving parts in the sprocket assembly, but uh, take it step by step and uh, give it a good clean up. Okay, um, first part to sort of dissembling this spine section um, and cleaning up the sprockets. Uh, we're going to actually take the fins off because it makes it a lot easier to work with. Uh, saves these sort of flapping around, swinging around. Um, to do this, on this particular mirage drive, uh, you take the sort of reverse toggle, just pull it sort of halfway, like so. So the fins are sitting, sitting half, halfway, and uh, that gives you access to a, a hex bolt above the top of the fin. Um, and we can un un unscrew it from there, uh, but we have to uh, grip the the bolt in the fin with a pair of pliers we do this to, uh, to to undo and release the fin from the mast. Uh, if you're using a, the sort of latest V2 um, Raj Drive 180, you have a different fin attachment here. This is the V1 from 2017 uh, Hobie Mirage Kayaks. Um, 2018 one uses a, a different uh, fin attachment here and uh, you can release your fin by simply undoing a, a spring, uh, removing a clevis pin and that allows the, the fin to drop off the mast. Okay, so pliers on the nut and the fin and we can then up slowly undo the, the bolt holding the fin in place. Okay, with the with the bolt removed from the fin, you can just undo the screw until it allows you to slide the fin from the mast. So if you ever damage a mast, uh, hit the bottom and, and bend this at all, you, uh, that's how you remove the fin and to replace your mast. You uh, get a set of pliers onto the flattened section on the on the mast and give it a good turn until uh, the the threaded mass unscrews from the, the brass insert in this section here, the boom. And uh, it can be a little tough because uh, often there's a little bit of Loctite in there that you have to break before the uh, mass will unscrew, but that's how you replace a mass if needed. Uh, we don't need to do it here for, for, for general maintenance, so uh, we're just taking the fin off to make it easier to work with this section. So we can put the fin to one side uh, and now remove the second fin in the same way. And that's the second fin removed. So we'll pop those fins to one side. We can give those a quick wipe over to clean them up, but uh, we don't really need to do anything too much with those there. So now we're on to uh, dismantling the, the spine to access the the sprockets and the bearings there to give those a good clean and uh, re-grease those. Okay, the first thing we'll do is just to give the spine section and the, the mask a good wipe over, just give them a general clean up, just to make it a little cleaner to work with as we take it apart.
Okay, so that's the spine section all clean and ready for taking apart. Uh, we have the sort of reverse and forward toggles here, the tendons. Um, you can take this section apart, uh, there's a bolt there. Um, and you can give those a clean up if you want, but they're fairly easy to access just as, as they are fitted to the spine. Um, you can undo, they just unscrew um, and that releases the cables that run down through the spine. Um, and you, can, you can give that a clean up, but uh, you don't really want to go removing all these uh, cords running through because they'd be an absolute pain to re-thread. Um, so we're going to leave those as they are. But uh, to access the sprockets underneath, which we definitely want to give a good clean and uh, service, we will uh, access those by undoing some bolts on top of the spine here, um, some screws. Uh, so we're just going to uh, unscrew those now to remove the covers beneath, giving us access to the sprockets. There is one more screw under there at the top which we're going to undo and that will allow this whole section to drop off. Right, this bit here is probably the most complex part of the whole Mirage drive. There's lots of uh, little roll bearings in here so uh, as we take it apart you'll see. Um, but take it step by step and we're, it's fairly straightforward to put back together again. So if we take this top section off, you'll be able to see in there a number of the small roller bearings, just one side of the sprocket. So I'm just going to put that to one side for a second. And then as we move down, we have a plastic washer, which holds the the, the roller bearings in place in there, this little holder. Um, so we'll put that to one side. Uh, moving down, you've got the first sprocket assembly with the boom and mast. Uh, that opens up, we just give it a pull, it pulls the, uh, the cords through to allow it to move. You can see that there. And that opens up to another housing with roller bearings and it's much the same the other side as we move down this is where all the roller bearings fall out so the other side there was a same with the uh, sprockets uh, the roller bearings in the housing plastic washer holding them in, this time that's held on onto the cord um, and that leads to the second sprocket on there and on the far side there's another section with roller bearings, these ones are a lot smaller than the others so I uh, keep the, those ones separate but effectively what we're going to do now is take all the roller bearings out um, separate them all up so they're all uh, where they need to be, give them a good clean before we clean the sprocket assembly and start putting it all back together again When cleaning the sprocket section, make sure you get right in between each of the teeth, get any grit out of there, because uh, it's uh, potentially an area of sort of high wear, especially if you're getting grit in there with the chains moving through it all the time. So uh, just pay attention and get all the, all the old muck and grease out of there. Okay, so on each of the sprocket assemblies, there is um, some sort of mechanism for making the fins turn in reverse or turn forwards um, all operated by the, the cables running through the drive uh, you can access it all by undoing the covers here and uh, undoing the screws but uh, it's not really needed but um, we can take a look in there to see what's inside and just give it a clean out anyway
So we can just take that cover off. Um, I've noticed in here is a bit of sand and grit, so uh, I'll just give that all a quick wipe down before we pop it back on and uh, start assembling it again. Okay, so that's all clean now. We can uh, pop the cover back on and uh, do the other side. Okay, so that's one cover put back on. We can now open the uh, top cover on the other sprocket and give that one a clean out. Okay, so now that one's clean, we can uh, pop the cover back on. Okay, it's now time to reassemble the sprockets and uh, re-grease the bearings. Okay, so it's probably the most fiddly bit of the, the reassembly. It's where we've got to put all the little uh, roller bearings back in place. Um, it's made a little easier by coating them in grease. Uh, it sort of sticks them all together uh, as you reassemble. But uh, it's a case of taking it one stage at a time um, and working down the sort of sprocket sprocket system. So we'll start at the top um, with the smallest roller bearings. Uh, and what we'll do is we're just going to uh, get a load of grease, lag it into the, the bearing holder and then place each bearing in. As you can see plenty of grease in there, so now we're just going to pop all the little bearings back in. And in this end section I believe there's 13 of these little ones to put back in place. Bit of a messy job. Okay, so they're all pop back in there now. Don't worry too much about excess grease that'll uh, push out of the way as uh, as we reassemble it, and we can wipe that off afterwards. So now that section slots up. There's a little black sort of re receiver there that, that, that pops over there and uh, holds in place. That's the first section done. Now it's a case of balancing that as we uh, reassemble the rest in a similar fashion uh, with each sort of bearing holder we're going to absolute lag it in grease and uh, pop pop each bearing back in um, with these bigger bearings now uh, bigger roller bearings there's uh, 15 in each section so uh, let's start on that and remove the sort of bearing holding washer out of the place just slot that over the sprocket just keep that out of the way uh, we'll pop that in place in a minute as we assemble, reassemble Okay, so 15 bearings in place, all lagged up in grease. Take the washer, just give that a bit of a smear in grease, pop that over the top, that holds the bearings in place. Then the sprocket is going to pop back into there, but again, I'll just give that section a good coating of grease because there's uh, quite a lot of wear on that section. Um, it's, it's obviously a uh, taking quite a lot of the strain as the Mirage driver is in use. Don't worry too much about the sprocket teeth, we'll grease those up well when the chains go on. So then uh, let's slot that end section back in as I've popped that out as I've uh, put this next bit on. So that's, that's half of it there on. You can see the sprocket can all move again there. Same again, gonna lag that section up with grease and get the, the next lot of bearings in. So that's another 15 bearings in place there. Again, lag the sprocket up with grease and pop that back in place. As we do it, we just might have to pull these cords to uh, stop the cord getting trapped. OK, 
Okay, that leaves just the last section to do now. Again, another 15 bearings. This time into this end holder here. As you can see, 15 bearings in there, all nicely greased up. So that's a case of putting this back on to the system. Uh, take the bearing cover, just give that a bit of a, a grease against the bearings to hold them in place. Then we're going to pop this back on the sprocket, grease all that up, pop that over like so. Now it's time to uh, screw the covers back on. Just give each screw a dab of grease as it goes back on. Okay, so that's the six screws on top back in place. It leaves just the one underneath to pop back in. I'll just give it all a wipe down. Getting the excess grease off. Okay, and that's the sprocket assembly reassembled, all greased up and cleaned. So that's the worst bit over with. It's the most complicated part. So now it's just a case of re reattaching all the other other parts and uh, until we've got a fully working drive again. So before we move on. Um, we'll note that where these cords run down through the spine um, there are some small pulleys so we have to spray a bit of corrosion block spray on there or rubbing a bit of grease on there just to keep them all running nice and smooth um, if you use a spray then it will run down through the system and keep that section uh, nicely lubricated so that the uh, it can all uh, operate, operate there without hindrance just make sure there's no muck sitting around the edge of it. Okay, so it's sort of a reverse now, putting everything back on. Um, start with the fins. Again, these to slide on the masts. Onto the thread. And screw those back in place. And again, we'll need to uh, move the fins and the booms to their sort of half position to gain access to the to the bolt below, so that we can reattach the nut that holds the fins on. Again, using a pair of pliers, you might want to uh, just loosely thread them on to the bolt first. These are nylock nuts, so uh, yeah, we we'll just need to grip, grip them with the pliers. Use your use your hex key just to tighten them, tighten those back into place. And you want it so the bolt just sort of sits in line or just past the uh, edge of the bolt, uh, edge of the nut. Just like so. So that's one done, we'll do the other side. Okay, so that's the fins reattached to the drive, like so. The next step will be to reattach the idler pulley system. To do that, take the idler pulley and the idler shaft, and we also need the idler roller bearings. Again, these bearings will be re greasing so that the idler pulley runs nice and smooth. So, again, it's a case of a uh, getting some corrosion block grease, putting it into the uh, idler pulley, um, 
the roller bearings can only go in from one side. One side's a larger opening than the uh, the other tapered side. So uh, make sure you pop them in the right side. Plenty of grease in there. Any excess will just push that away. We can wipe that off after. And one by one, place the uh, place the roller bearings in. Okay, so now the roller bearings are in, in the idle pulley. Um, make sure there's plenty of grease on there. I'm going to take the uh, tip shaft out of the way. Uh, take the shaft and uh, the idle pulley needs to be orientated so that the tapered end, not the open end where the uh, roller bearings are accessible, the tapered end is pointing up towards the levers um, and uh, take the idler shaft and you'll see there's a flat notch on one one end and, uh, and a groove in one end that's going to be facing down um, that flat end uh, meets where the, the grub screw is to uh, lock the, the shaft in place so then we just take the uh, hex key to lock that in place by screwing it back in like so so that's the idler pulley there reassembled okay so next up is the drums Again, these are going to go onto the drum shafts, uh, and again, they use roller bearings. So, uh, we'll pop the spine out of the way whilst we reassemble and add the bearings, re grease that again with each drum, plenty of grease. And uh, take each bearing at a time and pop it in. You can dip it in grease if you want, but uh, there's plenty in, the, in there to, uh, to coat them with. So that's 15 roller bearings in place in the drum. A bit more grease in there. And it's same with the uh, same with the other one. Okay, so that's the second drum done. So now we're going to uh, pop each of those back onto the drum shaft. Okay, so as we put the drums back on, um, just wiggle them onto the drum shaft slowly to make sure that the roller bearings are all lined up. And that should go all the way in. Any excess grease will, will come out the end and we can just wipe that away. And it's the same again with the other side. Just take, take it steady. If one jumps out of place like it has just done, just realign them and try again. There we go. that's both drums back on and in place it's time to reattach the idler cable and the chains to the drum so we take the chain give it a light grease we'll give it a bit more grease once it's in place but we need to put this now back around the sprocket making sure there's sort of equal length of chain either side of the sprocket when the fins are in their most vertical position uh, it could be a little fiddly this part and it might take a few attempts just to get it to sit right in this case of uh, taking the threaded ends and threading them back into the uh, corresponding holes on the drums which again can be a little fiddly
Okay, that's one chain on there, as you can see, the thread back through the drum, running around to the other side, like so. It's time for the, the second chain now. Again, we'll just give it a quick light grease and put it back in position. Okay, so that's all four chains back on, a little bit fiddly. Uh, it takes a little time just to get them in the right position. So you've got equal length of chain at uh, each side of the sprocket. Um, and that'll be worth just popping these nuts on before we put the idler cable on. Uh, we won't fully tension them just yet, we'll do that once the idler cable is in place. Okay, so that's the chains back in place. Um, just sort of just tighten those up so they're tension enough for the cables not to fall off as I'm putting the idler cable on. Um, which we'll do now in a similar fashion the idler cable goes round the uh, idler pulley this time underneath the uh, the drum and into a, a hole in the bottom of the drum again a little bit fiddly uh, takes a few minutes to do and get right And just as the cable starts to tension, um, just do fine adjustments between each um, nut, go side to side, just add a half a turn at a time until it's uh, tensioned so that you can just squeeze the uh, cable in slightly by the pulley, but uh, not so tight that it's actually restricting the system and making it uh, difficult to move. And that feels about right there. Uh, and now we can go back to the chains and again just tension those so that um, there's a little bit of squeeze room on the cables but they're not so tight that um, they actually restrict the drive from moving. Yeah, and that feels about right. Just sort of wipe off any excess grease here before uh, we put the last piece back on, which is the uh, pedal cranks. So yeah, the last part is to put the uh, pedal cranks back on. We'll take one at a time. Um, basically that's got to slot back into the drum. Uh, what I like to do is just put a little bit of grease on this section here because uh, I will be sliding if you are adjusting the pedals at all. So uh, I'll give that a quick smear, just a light coating. Again, it keeps any salt from sitting on the surface and potentially causing corrosion as well. Just make sure you've got the left and right ones around the right way. Uh, slide it in place. You have to squeeze the lever to uh, pull the pin up. And you can re-engage that with a drum. Once it's in position, like so. In this case, putting the bolt back on, just give that a quick dip in some grease, just to give that the threads a coat. I just need to give them a little tap to get back in position. There we go. Now we're just going to. Uh, Fold that back in place. That's one in place. Same again with the second one. And that is the Mirage Drive now reassembled. Just check it all operates fine, and it does. Hopefully, needs retensioning. We can do that now, but uh, that all seems to be all seems to be good. So, uh, finishing touches now. We'll just give it a, a wipe down, get all the uh, excess grease off. Um, then, what I'll do is I'll just spray a cloth in uh, 
in the corrosion block spray and uh, just give the whole unit a, a light coating and wipe down with that. Um, just paying particular attention to the exposed metal parts. Put the final spray into the uh, boom sections there. I'll let some uh, lubricant run into the uh, pivoting section. Put a reverse and forwards there. Like so. Okay guys, so there we have it. That's how I clean and maintain my Mirage drive and service it. Uh, like I say, I perform that sort of every six months or so. And I've had this particular drive a year now, uh, so that's the second uh, service I've performed on it. Uh, it's covered several hundred miles over the last year, including some 20 miler days, and uh, it all is running uh, just like new still. And it's all it's in uh, great condition. And that's testament to, uh, to to the sort of quality that Hobie have put into this drive system. So if you need any further advice uh, on, on your drive, get in contact with your local dealer. Likewise, any spare parts um, that you need to replace on your drive, get in contact with them. Uh, in the UK, I uh, use Cornwall Canoes. They stock an excellent range of, of parts and can give uh, great advice on servicing and looking after your Hobie kayak and your Mirage drive. So guys, I hope that helps. Any questions, uh, feel free to post below in the comments. Cheers.